no, that's not going to work. Uh, all right. I'm going to come through the screen. So that Anything we, yeah, you're right. So you. Sure. If you are to be in pictures, you're wonderful to see. If you are to be in Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. My name is James, joined as ever by my good friend Steve, and this is our Halloween spooktacular. <laughs> this episode, we are looking at Hideo Nakata's Ring. James, I have never seen this film, and ironically, I was teaching some Japanese students back in the late 80s when The Ring was all the rage, and they the had loved 80s? it. You mean the late 90s? Did I say the 80s? I meant you did. The late, yes, I meant late 90s. I did mean late 90s. Um, yeah, I'm getting old. Eh? What you can are. I say? You Anyhow, I, I would have believed had, you had, if it was the late 80s. I, I, had, but, uh... I, had, I had two long-term uh, Japanese students that I was teaching English to, and they loved The Ring. I think they had the... It, was it based on a manga book? I kind of vaguely a remember. Novel. It's based on a novel. A novel. Yeah. Okay, I remember yeah. them having the book and talking about it all the time. And even in my English language, I would use whatever they were interested in to, to talk about different elements. So I was I was aware of the films and then the remake. But I had never watched it. And so I finally, for our series here, I finally watched it. And if I'm honest, um, I enjoyed it. I don't quite get the accolades this film has. Like people saying this is one of the best psychological horror films ever made. I'm thinking, really? It was? I mean, I enjoyed it. There's elements mm. of the film I liked. I thought the acting was great. I think um, Nanako Matsushima is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. I mean, she's, and when subsequently I looked in Wikipedia, she's considered one of the most beautiful women in Japan. I'm thinking, well, at least I'm, at least I'm on target here. You're on brand. Uh, yes. Yes. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I thought the, the premise was interesting enough. There was a, just enough pull in to get, you know, with a, a enough lore and some backstory. Cause at first I'm thinking a video type. Well, one, that's not a big thing today. So videotapes already dating us pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I thought it's kind of stupid. Like you watch a videotape and then one week later, your data who came up with that. It's kind of dumb and idiotic, but then they bring in the SP and they bring in the backstory and the, and the lore of what went on before. And I thought that mostly filled in the blanks. I still thought it was kind of a, a little bit of a silly premise, but by and large enjoyed it but don't understand the accolades it received. Right. No, I think a lot of what you're saying is fair enough. And I think a lot of, you know, it's it's one of those movies that kind of came out of nowhere and um, and then completely saturated the market. <laughs> and as you said, there, there have been, even in Japan, there have been so many sequels and reboots and remakes of it. You know, I've even sort of lost count. And then there's the remake and there are sequels to the remake. And there's almost like a reboot to the remake as well. So there's so much of it and and the the character of Sadako has become mm -hmm. so kind of iconic that when you see her in the movie today if you're watching it for the first time i think a lot of that impact of her appearance is diluted and lost mm -hmm. so what and also just the different approaches to how uh, the Japanese will tackle this kind of horror movie as opposed to how the US will, where in the US it's far more about like big, loud, crashy jump scares and gore and violence and and that kind of thing, where here it's really about the, the atmosphere mm -hmm. and just a sort of slowly encroaching sense of dread mm -hmm. that I think that this film does uh, really well, actually. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd agree with that. I uh, there was a couple jump scares that worked. Uh, it was more psychological. Mm. I can I can understand the reason for putting a week between watching it and dying is basically the fear that it gives to people. But there's no real explanation about why a week. Like why not three no. days? Why a week? Why it's just kind of this random period of time that's not really explained. So like how do how do curses work and do we, you know, and, and, and at the end, I guess it's, I guess if I watch it's, it's a copy, if, if I watch a copy, then it, like, it, it, it's like, they're really stretching this. And uh, it, it's like watching a Harry, I, I like Harry Potter, but sometimes the logic of spell casting in Harry Potter leaves mm. a lot to be desired. That's where I thought this curse is kind of convoluted and a little bit weird. Well, it's, it's a combination of kind of sort of traditional folklore and ghost stories with 
the sort of encroachment of technology into our sort of daily lives. The the, the remake really kind of hammers that point home far more okay. overtly and clumsily. This idea that, you know, by allowing TVs into our home and allowing sort of internet feeds, if you like, into our home, what are, what else have we opened up, up our, yeah. our sort of hallowed sanctuaries to? Whereas, you know, it also plays into a lot of sort of uh, folklore ideas where, um, you know, Japanese culture believes in animism, you know, the idea that every yes. object has, has a spirit, whether it's mm -hmm. alive or not, like, you know, this remote control has a spirit, you know, this, mm -hmm. my, a tree has a spirit, everything yeah. has a spirit. And there's an element of that that plays into it, that this videotape can have some kind of sort of sentience. Yes. Yeah. To it. And, and also it's, I, I kind of, watching it again this week i was really kind of won over by the the analog nature of it all it came it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's about technology but it arrived at such a sort of specific moment where everything in the movie is is on the cusp of obsolescence like yes. everywhere everywhere you go yeah. it's landlines and yeah. pay phones and vcrs and and that's about as high tech as it gets you know the the, the one scene yeah. where she connects two two vcrs up together to, to make a copy you're like wow you know this yeah. is her really kind of like experimenting with the technology and um so yeah so you understand how 25 years later these are incredibly sort of foreign concepts yeah. you know the idea yeah. of like a rotary phone and or a, a vcr or anything like that you know kids watching it today yeah. might not be able to connect with it in any tangible way they'll be like i don't really understand how any of this works or right. and therefore how you this... make a copy how do you make right. a copy of a... Right. and this is the problem anytime technology becomes the main catalyst in a film is it's going to be dated in 20 years sure and, and like you were saying to an audience in 1998 this would have been really cutting edge stuff but for an audience in 2023 we're thinking wow it's very antiquated and it, something's lost in the translation then well there was i mean i I think it's it's just you have to just sort of embrace the period of the time when the movie was made. I mean, we were talking about going my way earlier. You know, that was a movie made in 1944 for a 1944 audience. Audience, yeah. And yeah. and I think you have to now do a, a kind of the same thing with this. You have to look at it when it was made and and just embrace the fact that you know th these technologies are no longer with us as it were the other thing i like about it is this trope of a videotape because i know in japan i mean we've all experienced it the idea of like renting a videotape and taking it back and bringing this thing into your house where you don't know what it's been you don't know how many other pairs of hands have touched it. you don't really know what anybody's done with it <laughs> but you're you're more than willing to bring it into your home you know to enjoy overnight and then and then you take it back and then you pass it on it's a really weird kind of sort of viral metaphor that yeah. I think the film plays into, and obviously you can, you can draw, you know, contagions, uh, sexual, sexual transmitted diseases, whatever you want, you can sort of align with that if you want. And it's the, the same fear of just, yeah. you know, passing something on to another, um, which I kind of really, I really like about it, but more than anything else, I just found, find the movie deeply kind of unsettling. Yeah, you know, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not, it's, you know, there's some great imagery in it, obviously, particularly the big sort of final sequence where she mm -hmm. you know, climbs out of the TV. But I think it has a lot, the impact of it will have a lot to do with the circumstances in which you watch the film. Because mm -hmm. I've seen it probably, probably half a dozen times now. And the first yeah. time I watched it was back in the UK when it first came out on uh, VHS, or it would have been DVD, I think, by then. Um, so it was around 2000 or 2001. So the first time I watched it was renting it from a store, bringing it mm -hmm. home, watching it on the TV. And I think that that's the best way to watch it. You know, mm -hmm. there's there's a mantra that everybody says, oh, the best way to watch any movie is see it on the big screen with an audience. I don't think that's necessarily true with a movie like Ring because I have seen it on the big screen with an audience. About eight years ago or so, I had the opportunity to, to see it and to meet Hideo Nakata. He came to Hong Kong and... Mm -hmm. Uh, his host actually got in touch with me and said, do you want to come and meet Hideo Nakata? I was like, yeah, I'd love to meet him. So I oh, come yeah. along. We, ha we had dinner, like four of us had dinner. It was great. And we watched a screening of The Ring and then a, a screening of a Narusi film that was playing that he really liked, that he wanted to recommend. Yeah. But 
I watched it on the big screen, and this was probably about 2014 with a with a full audience. And I've got to be honest, I walked away after that screening, going, "Yeah, it's kind of lost its punch a little bit." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, well, and it well, was you, a, you... it was a beautiful setting and a beautiful print of it and everything. But I just felt in a big room with a lot of people on the big screen is not the ideal way to watch it. Right. Because when I rewatched it for due diligence earlier this week at home at night on my own i was like uh yeah i came into it going oh yeah i know it's lost some of its power but you know i, I want to yeah. just refresh my memory and it really creeped me out again <laughs> i was kind of looking behind me a little bit once or twice just to check there wasn't anybody sort of anything standing in the yeah. corner and so i was like okay good it still works so you got to meet hiriyaki is it sonata no i met the director uh, oh okay yeah. Yeah, I met I met the director Hideo Nakata. The director, okay. Mm. I was thinking um, the the actor Hir- Hiroyuki Sanada. Hiroyuki Sanada, who of course yeah. is now a bigger deal than he even was back here. I was going to say I've seen him in many movies, and I think most recently in Bullet Train, he was Bullet, Bullet Train, Train, John Wick, Chapter Four. Of course, yes. He's kind of today. He's like the go-to aging yakuza boss. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a lot of that, a lot of his fame is to do with um, he made this movie ring and then uh, a couple of years later he made a movie called twilight samurai uh, okay. both of them big critical and commercial hits in japan and elsewhere and then they cast him in last samurai opposite tom cruise so is there him... a reason why it's called the ring what it was <laughs> like the ring it doesn't I mean, seem far as... to make any sense other than the ringing telephone but then even the remake's called the ring and it just doesn't make sense i believe it refers to um her viewpoint um up out of the well and it's what she can see about it's, it's that kind of circular uh, ring oh, of light okay. i think i think <laughs> that's what it refers to okay not that it really matters no but i'd like the the title of a movie to make some kind of connection i can mm. but i guess it's also the circle of the curse you know you just got to keep passing it on passing it on passing it on but i guess that's probably more of a chain than a ring like a chain yeah, letter it's... or something like that i wouldn't I wouldn't think about, about it too much. much. Yeah, no. don't think about it too much. But what do we call this movie? Let's just call it the ring. It has nothing to do with the movie. Yeah, just don't think about it too much. Yeah. Well, like I say, it was it was a book before and it was a very big hit in um in the early 90s, the book. And then they actually mm-hmm. made a lot of changes. Uh ma- like making the main character a woman is not how the book uh works. In the book, it's like um it's still a family, and but it's the I think it's the mother and the child watch the videotape. And so the guy then goes out to uh, to solve the mystery. Ah, okay. So they change it for the movie. And I think it works a lot better with a female protagonist. Yeah, no, it does. It does. It, it, the, many, elements, many elements in this film really worked well. I, I, I did enjoy it. I think, you know, we've mentioned before, it's the expectations thing. When you go into a film, I was kind of expecting this and it was a little more of a slow burn a oh, little yeah. more of a build up which is fine i just wasn't prepped for that and in the end i actually enjoyed that more and uh and yeah i thought the film was enjoyable i have to catch the remake is the remake any good the remake is actually pretty good uh the, the mm-hmm. first one 2003 gore verbinski directed it it's very different in tone mm-hmm. as it's far more kind of in your face and sort of aggressive in its right, in its right. attempts to scare you. Uh, but it's actually pretty decent. I, w- I haven't seen it since it came out, but I remember when it came out going in very skeptically and then coming out going, actually, that's pretty decent. They have to change I, some of some of the backstory elements because all the stuff kind of like with the volcano and what happened, yeah. that wouldn't really translate. Yeah. But uh, they do they do a pretty decent job. I did toy with the idea of when we opened up saying, you know, I really enjoyed Naomi Watts in this film, and watching you look on your <laughs> no. face going, "Oh, we watched the wrong movie." But I didn't. I didn't go there. I didn't go there. Good, so, good, 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 good. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, the other thing is that this was obviously one of the movies that really kicked off the whole sort of Asia Extreme J horror fad, which. Mm-hmm you know, brought a lot of these movies to international audiences. Yeah. This movie and the Juon, which is a very similar kind of, you know, slow burn uh, Japanese uh, uh, story, which involves a bit of technology as well and a similar kind of antagonist. Uh, there's also Audition, which I think we might actually get to quite soon, to Takashi okay. Miike's or Audition yeah. and films like that, that, um, you know, that really kind of... Uh, came out all at the same time. It was probably kind of pre-millennial angst mm-hmm. <laughs> going on. 
and a lot of them got sort of snapped up and remade in the US mostly ba badly uh, or uh, at least got a bit of a theatrical release or a festival release in order for yeah. audiences to see them and so yeah it was it was a good little sort of wave of uh, of movies which you know if you look at the horror stuff that's coming out today it's still heavily influenced by that stuff none of it's any good anymore unfortunately well that's our review of the ring our spooktacular special in 2023 it's our second year doing this series of films as we approach the halloween season james is much more of a horror buff than me he's kind of bringing me along although being a movie lover, uh, there's quite a few films, James, that uh, I think we can look at that I've watched that are pretty good horror films. And the th movie I really want to watch that's coming out is the, the the Dracula movie about the Demeter. What's what's that called? Oh yeah, the Last Voyage of the Demeter, um, which yes, um, which is has got a Hong Kong release date now. It's coming out around Halloween time, so we can check. Maybe it out. we can get that for Spooktacular because that's a movie I am highly anticipating. For, for sure, yeah, me too, actually. Yeah. So that's uh, that's this entry into our spectacular series. Check out the rest of the series as well as other films we have at Deep Dive. So yeah, what do you think of The Ring? Uh, do you still think it holds up? Uh, do you think any of the other films in the series, remakes or Japanese versions, are worth watching as well? Or do you agree that it all kind of spirals out of control? Which other movies from this particular period do you uh, like? Give us some recommendations in the comment section below, and uh, we will see you next time. You ought to be in pictures. Oh, what a hit you would be. You're more